Evidence of ancient rivers and vast oceans indicate a warmer, wetter past. But only in the past several decades have we been able to see Mars so clearly. And much of what we now know is due to the extraordinary efforts of a group of NASA scientists, engineers, and technicians who came together and created an ambitious robotic mission, a mission they called Viking. In August and September of 1975, two large, nearly identical spacecraft were launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Vikings 1 and 2, named for the fearless Nordic explorers of Earth, would give humans, finally, a close-up look at this alien world. But the Viking mission began nearly a decade before at NASA's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. Viking was truly a collaborative effort. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California built the orbiters and would later manage the science mission. The Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, known then as NASA Lewis, designed the Atlas Centaur rockets. On August 20th, 1975, after years of painstaking work, Viking 1 perched atop its gleaming rocket and was launched into history. Just one month later, Viking 2 followed its twin, and both arrived at their destinations in the summer of 1976, America's bicentennial year. As Viking 1 eased into its orbit, an onboard camera began scanning potential landing sites, and a favorable location was chosen, near ancient outflow channels in a low plain known as Christ Planitia. On July 20th, around 2 a.m., at JPL, where the team was assembled, Viking 1's lander separated from the orbiter and began its hazardous descent to the surface. Plunging through the thin Martian atmosphere at nearly 10,000 miles per hour, the lander was protected by a heat-shielding aeroshell. At around 19,000 feet, a large parachute was deployed, slowing the hurtling spacecraft. At 4,000 feet, the parachute and aeroshell were released. Rockets fired, further slowing the lander's descent to just six miles per hour. For 19 agonizing minutes, the time it takes a radio signal to travel to Earth from Mars, the Viking team held their collective breath and waited for confirmation that the lander was down safely and functioning. Viking 1's lander had made it. Immediately after touchdown, the lander's camera took its first picture and relayed the historic image back to Earth. We took a, a picture of its own foot to see how far it had sunk into the surface. Turns out it was very reasonable, good picture, and shows a foot landed on the surface of Mars. It was very nice. The Viking team repeated this gut-wrenching process with Viking 2 which on September 3rd, 1976, also settled solidly on Martian soil. Over the following years, the two Viking spacecraft conducted experiments studying atmospheric and soil composition, meteorology, and seismology, and provided a catalog of more than 65,000 images from the surface and from orbit. But the principal reason for the mission was to look for evidence of life. We went to look for biology, because the big question then was, was there ever life on Mars? It's still the big question. The landers dug soil samples from the frozen surface and looked for signs of respiration, an indication of biological activity. Though the initial results were thought promising, Viking found no conclusive signs of life. But the spacecraft, originally designed to function for 90 days, continued collecting data for nearly six and a half years. And in that time, the Mars textbook was rewritten. The mission ended in 1982, but the Viking data proved timeless. 
Mars continues to hold a special fascination for us today. Thanks to the dedication of men and women at the Langley Research Center and other NASA centers across the country, the mysterious Mars of our past is becoming a much more familiar place. And I think all of us that were involved look back with extraordinary pride. And, uh, and um, you know, I think we can say we did it. Perhaps in the not too distant future, a mission will be undertaken to establish a human presence on Mars. And that next generation of Mars explorers will know that their trail was blazed by Vikings. Well, good morning. It's certainly my pleasure to welcome you to the NASA Langley Research Center and to the symposium Mars Past, Present, and Future. 30 years almost to this day, on June 19, 1976, the Viking 1 orbiter achieved Mars orbital insertion. A month later, on July 20th, a Viking 1 lander became the first human-made object to successfully soft land on another planet. The success of Viking 1 orbiter and lander was matched by Viking 2, which achieved Mars orbital insertion on August 7th and soft landed on September 3rd. With these great accomplishments, a new era of Mars exploration began. Today, we commemorate the outstanding success of the Viking project managed here at the Langley Research Center. Langley also was responsible for the Viking landers. Scientists from Langley, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Ames, Goddard, and Johnson served on the Viking science teams. Hence, Viking was truly the first one NASA mission. The design and engineering of Viking landers has influenced every Mars landing to date. The Viking mission legacy includes many things, such as the Viking 70-degree sphere cone aeroshell, the Viking thermal protection system, and the Viking supersonic disk gap band parachute, all of which has been used in every subsequent Mars lander mission, including Mars Pathfinder, the Mars Exploration Rovers, Spirit, and Opportunity. I look forward to the return to Moon, this time to stay, and to the day when we may, fly, may actually fly an airplane on the Red Planet, and eventually to the day when this nation will land a human on the, on the surface of Mars. The Viking story and its significant impact on the subsequent Mars missions and Mars science is the subject of today's symposium, Mars Past, Present, and Future. None of us have ever lost sight or will ever lose sight of what a tremendously complex uh, achievement uh, the Viking was, uh, embodied really in the, in the form of the Viking lander. Uh, Langley uh, originally managed the, um, I think it was a lunar orbiter mission in the late 60s. They set the stage for orbiting spacecraft. JPL came along uh, with some flyby spacecraft at Mars in, uh, in the later 60s and early 70s. Uh, we had a, 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 a Mars orbiter in 1971. So the, this, the preparation for 